Soldiers, you're at ease, relax, have fun. Civilians, relax, at ease, have fun, take pictures, laugh, talk, whatever you gotta do. This is this is a great event, all right? This is fun. Feel free to come up for, come on up closer even. Yeah. Hey, listen, thank you all for coming. Uh, the most valuable resource we have in, in our lives besides people, which is always the most valuable resource, is time. And so anyone that takes the time to, to support others, um, good on you. Thank you for, for taking that time. I appreciate y'all being here today. And so, uh, Nathan, you know, this is, this is about you to a certain extent, but then again, it is not about you. Um, the Army, you are, thank, thank goodness we got rid of that Army of One thing back a few years ago, because there is no such thing as an Army of One. Anything you do in life is going to be the result of the people that, that you're with. It's going to be most, most profoundly, most importantly, your family, uh, but also your friends, your colleagues, your subordinates. And, uh, and your mentors, coach, coaches, teachers, and mentors. Um, and don't ever forget that. So it's, it's, it is about you, but really it's about your mother, your father, uh, your grandparents, your brothers and sisters, um, and all those that are here to show your support. And, and that's, those are the ones that you're gonna lean on and depend on over the course of your life. Not only your, your career in the Army, but your life as a whole. And so anytime you are, uh, are, are promoted, awarded, you change command, or whatever else, it's about 10% you and 90% them. Don't ever forget that, all right? So I will say real quick, and getting started, Jim, um, <laughs> I've been told many, too many times so far this morning, or this afternoon, thank you for being here, and uh, this is an unbelievable opportunity. Uh, to be here today. Just in case anyone didn't know, Thornton uh, Cutler, Nathan's dad, and I were roommates. I had a bunch of roommates when I was here, and um, Thornton was the roommate I had more than any other during the four years here. And we kept in touch over the years, and uh, I had the, Jim and I had the privilege, Jim Daniel and I, who's a classmate, had the privilege of seeing Thornton shortly before he passed away um, in 1998, and we were pallbearers at his funeral as well. And uh, and so I now kept in touch with, with uh, Colonel and Mrs. Cutler and uh, the family over the years, not being able to talk to them or see them near as much as I would like to. Uh, but you know, the tyranny of the calendar and the tyranny of what the Army does um, precluded that, but we still uh, love each other and, um, and uh, have a bond that uh, we'll never forget and really appreciate. And so uh, even though the last time I saw Nathan, he was probably about this tall, <laughs> Um, I have seen him grow up over the over the years, and I remember when when Mr. Cutler, Colonel Cutler, called me um, what a little over a year ago now and said, or whenever it was, and said, "Hey, Nathan's going to be the, uh, the brigade commander." My first thought was, "Who is his dad?" <laughs> Come on, I knew Thornton. Anybody? Anybody? Knew Thornton? <laughs> Thornton was a great American. Let's, well, Thornton was a great American, and uh, if you haven't seen, if you want to see a great video, just take a take a look at the video we've got of him as the as the brigade adjutant doing the adjutant walk from uh, <laughs> from his post to uh, to his post in the formation. Um, he was perfect for the job. Um, so it has been an honor to to watch Nathan grow up over the years, and it is going to be. As everybody here knows, incredible to see what this uh, this officer does during his during his career. Um, I understand he's got plans to make it a career. Uh, what I would say is, and I know that there's some in here that are, that are serving now. There are some that serve for different periods of time. And here's what I will tell you, and I will give you this advice. I got a little bit more advice for you that we'll get to, but I will tell you everybody here this: anyone who serves for no matter what term deserves nothing less than your utmost respect and admiration, um, whether it's four years or 40, because everybody makes their decision. You're gonna have the opportunity to talk to soldiers and officers and colleagues and everybody else, and they're gonna be saying, hey, what should I do? Uh, should I stay in, should I stay or should I go? And at the end of the day, that decision is made by individuals based on their needs, and you don't ever know what is going on in everybody's life, because They've got financial issues, they've got stability issues, they've got family issues, whatever else. And so you never, you never think anything other than positively about anyone who has served no matter what their term has been, all right? 
And the other bit of advice I would give you is whenever you have the opportunity to do something like this, whether it's uh, preside over an award ceremony or a um, re-enlistment, a change of command, whatever it is, you take advantage of it every chance you get. You won't be able to do it all, but you take advantage every chance that you get. I've always said the two most special ceremonies that we have the privilege to participate in are re-enlistments and retirements. Uh, so whenever you can do a re-enlistment, <clears throat> memorize the oath and make it special because that's a soldier who has served his or her country and is either crazy enough or smart enough or ambitious enough to keep doing it. So they deserve extra credit and they deserve a special event. And you make those events special. Retirements are special, obviously, because that's someone who spent a career serving their country, and so taking a few minutes out of your busy day to go honor them for their service is time well spent on your part. All right, so you go to all those you can. I don't care if you're either a retiree or not. All right? Sure. Um, what else have I got for you? I think that's about it for now. All right? So we're going to, oh, I do have one last thing. The oath. The oath. Sorry. The oath. How many, how many careers do you know where you raise your right hand and you swear an oath? There ain't many. There's serving the military and, and Department of Defense civilians. So I got a question. It's quiz time, gang. Anybody that knows the answer, shout it out. What is the oath based on? What is it grounded in? Who knows? Anybody? Going once? That's right, the Constitution. <laughs> okay, for extra credit, what article? <laughs> article 6. Pull out your, everybody's got their pocket copy of the Constitution with them. <laughs> so pull out your pocket copy, and Article 6 says that, that um, executives in the, in, the, in the federal government will swear an oath. Executives and those uh, who are, uh, how do I say, I don't remember the exact terms, but it's basically all officers and civilians will swear an oath. And so the first law written by the first Congress specified that oath. That oath has, this oath has gone through iterations over the course of time. And the one we have now has been in place for, I don't remember now, a hundred, a lot of years. It's been, a, it's been a while, older than I am. So you know it's been around a while. Um, so it's morphed over time, but it is still based in the Constitution and predicated on the first, the first law that our first Congress um, enacted. So it is special and it is significant. And so even though this is the only time that you actually have to execute the oath, I would recommend that every time you are promoted, and I'm sure there will be many, uh, you continue to do the same. You make sure that that, that, that officer that's presiding over uh, your ceremony uh, has you do that. All right? Yes, sir. All right, very good. Well, let's do it. Raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, state your name in full. I, Nathaniel Gordy Cutler. Having been appointed an officer in the Army of the United States. Having been appointed an officer in the Army of the United States. In the grade of 01, second lieutenant. In the grade of 01, second lieutenant. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. That I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I take this obligation freely. That I take this obligation freely. Without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion. Without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion. And that I will well and faithfully. And that I will well and faithfully. Execute the duties. Execute the duties. Of the office upon which. Of the office upon which. I'm about to enter. I'm about to enter. So help me God. So help me God. So help me God.